How on earth is loving God by celebrating his birth, the birth of Jesus, and loving others by giving gifts and trying to spread joy? How is that breaking the intent of what God wants for those who follow him? What's up guys, my name is Elijah Weiss. I'm Josh Weiss. And if you couldn't tell by the last name, this is my father. That makes him my son. And even though he's not finished yet, he's about to be a doctor, which means he knows some stuff. So I have a question for you that I've heard a lot of things, especially with the social media age we live in. You get on TikTok, you start scrolling, you see some stuff. I have heard probably 10 different versions of why Christmas is a pagan holiday. So I wanted to ask you, is Christmas a pagan holiday? I've seen some pretty wild theories. Yesterday on, I saw something online and it was saying that if you look up the, the birthday of Baal, it's December 25th. And so we celebrate the birth of Satan. People say the same thing about like Halloween. Celebrating Halloween is bad. Well, what if I choose to celebrate Reformation Day? Like if I'm celebrating Re Reformation Day, and you say, no, you're not, you're celebrating Halloween, so you're basically a Satanist, who's right? I mean, like, the the problem that I have with this is that there's, that you feel this need to argue the contrarian view when somebody is trying to tell you your motivation or why you are doing something, why do you feel the need or why do why do Christians feel the need that we have to debate our side to them about our motives or our perspective or what we're doing if the only purpose is to debunk why you're doing it. To me, you can kind of get into a vicious cycle of going down every conspiracy theory or every negative thing or every... There are so many like niche beliefs out there that a very small subset of the world believes that if every one of them comes to you and says, hey, this is this, tell me, like, why, why, why is this okay to you? This is, this is what this is about. We'll spend all our time trying to, trying to debate something. You're not going to change their mind. They're not going to change your mind. And just because they bring up an argument that may sound like there's some merit to it doesn't mean that we have to have the argument. To me, like, okay, fine, so you believe it's a pagan holiday. You can be mad at me that I celebrate it. I'm okay with that. Somebody says Christmas is the birthday of Baal. When's the birthday for the Easter Bunny? <laughs> I'm like, I'm telling you, I'm asking. It's in April. Wait, is, is April the birthday of the Easter Bunny? That's when all bunnies were created. Okay. I didn't realize that. That's really, like, Baal is a false god. He doesn't exist. <laughs> so how are we gonna <clears throat> how are we gonna have a birthday for someone that doesn't exist? He was never born. <laughs> so we're celebrating the birth of someone who was never born. Wow. It's impressive. I mean like that it's it's <clears throat> basically People say what they want to say. Yeah, people say what they want to say, but this isn't a new thing. So, like, Corinthians is really great. It talks about, like, food sacrifice to idols. Mm -hmm. Your convictions and... <clears throat> Not just your convictions. Let me... Can I read it? Okay, so... <clears throat> so, first, first Corinthians chapter 8, and we can actually just start right at the beginning. So, now, regarding your question about... So the church in Corinth was kind of a messed up church. The whole first five chapters of first Corinthians is basically saying, Hey, you need to do this. You, need to you, do guys, this. Are, you guys are pretty much screwing up. We need to clean things up. So they, they want to get better. They're trying to get better. So clearly there's something that he's responding to Paul. Now, regarding your question about food that has been offered to idols, kind of like the whole pagan argument here, you can see coming Yes, we know that we all have knowledge about this issue. But while knowledge makes us feel important, 
It is love that strengthens the church. You could almost just apply that to the, like, like, okay, so you know that other people celebrate this day as the birthday of someone that doesn't exist. We all know that, yes, there's those arguments, but you know what actually makes the church special is love. It's what strengthens the church. Anyone who claims to know all the answers doesn't really know very much. Not, look, not my words. I'm reading from the Bible. But the person who loves God is the one, who, uh, the one whom God recognizes. So what about eating meat that has been offered to idols? It would seem like if someone is celebrating a holiday that others have celebrated as a pagan festival, that would be a pretty bad thing because it's like, well, you're participating in this paganism. Is it, it, it's the same thing. Yeah. Well, we all know that an idol is not really a God and that there's only one God. There may be so-called gods, both in heaven and on earth, and some people actually worship God many gods and many lords but for us there's only one god the father by whom all things were created and for whom we live and there is one lord jesus christ through whom all things were created and through whom we live so like i get it yes others celebrate this guess what he doesn't exist I mean, that's, that's pretty much the answer it, to any it, argument on that stuff. It's the whole thing. It's, it's like, it's, I guess, that's maybe kind of, God knew. That's kind of the answer to half of the arguments people have about anything that, comes, that has to do with Christianity. That, you know, It's pretty applicable. However, not all believers know this. And again, I'm reading, this is Paul, not Josh. Not all believers know this. Some are accustomed to thinking that idols are maybe real. So when they eat food that has been offered to idols, they think of it as worship of real gods, and their weak consciences are violated. So I'm not saying that maybe others who think of it as pagan are struggling with the fact that they believe that we're really celebrating the birthday of someone that never existed I'm not saying that maybe their consciences are weak, that if we celebrate Christmas, it's a problem. I'm only reading, you can infer what you want. It's true that we can't win God's approval by what we eat. We don't lose anything if we don't eat it, and we don't gain anything if we do. But you must be careful so that your freedom does not cause others with a weaker conscience to stumble. stumble. So what you're saying here, Paul, is my brother here, thinks that Baal's birthday was real and that us celebrating Christmas is celebrating his birthday. You may have a weaker conscience. I'm not going to actually throw my Christmas celebration in your face. But you're not going to stop celebrating. But I'm not going to stop celebrating. For if others see you with your superior knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, won't they be engaged to violate their conscience by eating food that has been offered to an idol. So if they're struggling with Christmas being a pagan holiday, I'm not, I'm not telling you you have to celebrate. I'm not going to try and convince you to celebrate. I'm not pushing you to celebrate. I'm not telling you, hey, let's go get a birthday cake for Baal. Like, that, that, I'm, I don't want to do that because I recognize that there's a struggle you have with this. So I'm going to respect that. I'm going to love you. I'm not going to try and argue you to believe what I believe. I'm going to think in my head, well, this is how they feel. I'm sorry. That's, yeah. It's a pretty good answer to the question. And, I mean, like I was saying, there's a lot of things, especially with the world we live in today, where everyone has every reason why something that we do is pagan or idol worship. And, I mean, honestly, that kind of, that kind of answers any question someone would have about that. I mean, I, like I've told you before, I've had people tell me that celebrating a birthday is pagan. I mean, honestly, much of, much of Christianity and the Bible in general, it's about getting to know the heart of God. 
It's about drawing closer to God himself. So it, in that process, it's real easy to look at the letter of the law, to see something that you read or something that God said here or there, and to try and build your theology off that, that thing. We all see the, you know, people do it off single verses and stuff. But really, being a Christian is about drawing closer to the heart of God, getting to know who God is. And we are in this constant journey of dying to self daily so that he can live in us and through us to do something beyond us, as Pastor Everett likes to say. Yeah. So if that's the case, when we're trying to understand and learn the heart of God, you have to, you have to be able to interpret what you're reading in the big picture of the larger story of the Bible to understand who God is. And I don't, I see God as a jealous God. God doesn't want us worshiping any idols, but he's, I don't think he's petty either in thinking that, um, people use this type of stone to put at the altar of this false God. And if I happen to touch that stone, all of a sudden I've worshiped that. Yeah. Like, there has to be some level of higher level logic, which I think Paul kind of brings in yeah. that says, look, I'm just, I'm just telling you, you know what you're doing. Yeah. Motive matters, heart matters, intent matters. It's very easy to get lost in the law, I guess you can say. And I mean, we see it all throughout the, the, the New Testament, like all of the Pharisees and Sadducees are basically telling Jesus his entire you know, ministry, they're telling him, well, you're doing this because of this, you're doing this because of this, this is wrong because this says this. And I mean, it's, it's almost kind of humorous because Jesus is like, listen, I'm God. <laughs> like, no, you're wrong. You're focusing on this. And I think it's very easy as Christians to fall into this, you know, magnifying glass, every letter matters type of thing where you're a slave to the law, basically. Uh, yeah, I think honestly, it goes back to that, the heart and intent side. Uh, if, if we look at what's said always and miss the intent behind what's said, yeah. we end up getting the struggle of the law versus, you know, what we see in, in the New Testament. People often try to negate or discount the Old Testament saying, well, we're not under the law anymore. Yeah. And I think what's happening is they're missing the point. Like, 100%. initially, there's instruction that's given yeah. that lays out the framework of the rules of God. Just because he clarifies those rules when we get to the New Testament doesn't mean those rules were not important or good. Rules and structures and those lines that were drawn are very important. But understanding the heart of why those lines were drawn is equally as important. So what Jesus was doing when he was fighting with the Pharisees and Sadducees and even the disciples oftentimes, <clears throat> he wasn't trying to say what you were told was wrong. He wasn't, he didn't say here that, that the food sacrificed to idols is good. He's trying to clarify, look, like when I wrote that or when I said that or when this was communicated. This is what it actually meant like if people were taking something that they were sacrificing because they believed it and then they start eating, there's a problem. Yeah. That doesn't mean that the act of eating is wrong. And that doesn't mean that the, the act of, uh, nurturing is wrong. Like you have to be able to interpret what that means. And that's where hermeneutics comes in and making sure you can interpret the the words the of where, the why, the how. That same thing was taking place back then. So yeah. Jesus was all, I mean, the entire Sermon on the Mount yeah. is helping to clarify, like, look, I, I understand that I said, being God, of course, uh, that like you, you can't, you can't murder, but like you're missing it. I'm saying you can't even have hatred in your heart. Yeah. So the line's drawn. And now he's trying to clarify what the, the bigger lines of all of the things combined, what's the picture that's being made. He's trying to draw a picture that shows the heart of God, that shows the character of God, the nature of God, and how that's who we're supposed to be emulating because we're supposed to be dying to self. 
him living in us and through us. So it's no longer I who lives, he but Christ lives. who lives in us. So that's the entire thing of the Sermon on the Mount. So yeah, we're still in this process of clarifying all the things God yeah. said today. Like that's exactly what's happening. I mean, but it's funny because the way that we take these things, it's like we're just, he's making it so simple for us and we're just complicating it. Like it's, it's laid out so simply all throughout the New Testament and even in the Old Testament, it's a little harder to interpret because you have to put yourself in the place and figure out why things are being said. And it's a different time. But it's funny that God is trying to make it so simple for us and yet here we are today trying to get nitpicky in every single line and letter. Oh, this means this because of this. And if you look at this and this, it connects. It's like, no. He said this. He meant this. Move on. Like, follow what he said. Yeah. I'm still cautious, though, because I, I, I have compassion for those who are trying to live. Of course. To the T. Of course. To the letter of that law. Right? Somebody that's so devoted. I remember in, in high school, there was a debate with my youth pastor. You knew my youth pastor. I guess you do. I know. Of. He's very black and white on so many things. And then when it comes to, you know, when we were younger, we tried to like catch him in, you know, okay, but what say you about this? And we started talking about speeding. And it's like, okay, well, the law says you can only go 70. So why are you going 74? And he, he, he brought up this at the time. I thought it was like, you know, cockamamie answer. Like, what is this? Come on. He says, well, there's a spirit of the law. And I thought, what? What? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, wait, okay. okay. So there's the law, and then there's your ability to say, well, like, it doesn't that. really matter. It's, the law. <laughs> it's like, but in reality, you start thinking about it. This is kind of what we're talking about with these things. There's the lines that were drawn do not exceed 70 miles per hour. And then there's like in principle, in practice, no officer's going to pull you over at 71 miles an hour because there's a certain, there's a certain flexibility around it that they're, they're not saying rigidity, rigidity, like a rigidness to say you cannot exceed 70 miles an hour, even though it's the words, the letters say limit. Yeah. You cannot, cannot exceed. exceed. It's the limit. They're saying no more than 70, but to my youth pastor's comments, the spirit of the law, like everybody knows, you know, seven, nine miles over is, is really acceptable. You're, they want you to go with the flow of traffic. And, and so, so nine though, nine is kind of what officers <laughs> that's, often that's, tell that's me. Kind of, <laughs> <laughs> is it what you tell yourself when you're driving? <laughs> the point is, the point is there's a window Yeah. and the, the lines will say this, but the reality is this. What's the intent behind the law? They want order. What's the intent behind the law? They want, they, they want, they want the roads to be safe. Yeah. And there's a spirit of the law. He's, he's not, I mean, it sounds like a, <laughs> like a bit of a line, but we have to understand intent of God's heart. What is God trying to accomplish? He wants us to love him. He wants us to love others. How on earth is loving God by celebrating his birth the birth of Jesus and loving others by giving gifts and trying to spread joy. How is that breaking the intent of what God wants for those who follow him? It's not. I don't think so. I think you answered the question. Hopefully that helps anyone who is Hopefully. wondering. Hopefully. Thank you for watching. Until next time, shalom and God bless.